from San Mateo, California, it's theCUBE, covering SnapLogic Innovation Day 2018. Brought to you by SnapLogic. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in San Mateo, California, right at the crossroads. It's, the building's called the crossroads, but it's right at the crossroads of 92 and 101. It's a really interesting intersection over the years as you watch these buildings that are on the corner continue to change the names. I always think of Siebel, uh, his first building uh, came up on this corner. And we're here to see a good friend, uh, Snap Logic, and their brand new building, uh, Gaurav Dillon, chairman and CEO. Great to see you. Pleasure to be here. So how long have you been in this space? Gosh, uh, it's been about a year, okay. although it feels longer. You know, it's it's a high growth company, so these are dog years. <laughs> That's right, and, and, and <laughs> the, usually you yeah. outgrow it yeah, before the, the you years are short, in, right? but the days are long. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right next to Rocketon, I have to mention it, we all see it on the Warriors right. uh, jersey, right. so now we know who now they you know are where, and where are. they are, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, they're a good outfit. No. So we, we uh, had an interesting time putting a sign up and then the people who made their sign told us all kind of backstories on oh, it. Oh, good, so good. We're good. We're all good. right, so give us an update on SnapLogic. You guys are in a great space at a really, really good time. You know, things have been on a roll. Um, as you know, uh, the mission we set out to, to uh, engage with was to bring together applications and data in the enterprise. Uh, we have some of the largest customers in high technology, folks like Qualcomm, Workday, some of the largest customers in pharmaceuticals, folks like AstraZeneca, Bristol Myers Squibb, in retail, Denny's, Wendy's, et cetera. Uh, and these folks are basically bringing in new cloud applications and moving data into the cloud. And it's really fun to wire that all up for them. And there's more of it every day, and now that we have this uh, very strong install base of customers, we're able to get more customers faster. Right, it's and, a good time. And it's a great time, and and the the data is moving into the cloud, and the public mm -hmm. cloud guys are really making big bigger plays into the enterprise, Microsoft and yeah. and Amazon and yeah. and Google, and of course there's IBM and lots of other clubs. But you know, integration's always been such a pain, and you know, I finally figured out what the Snap and Snap Logic means after <laughs> interviewing you a couple <laughs> of times, right? But this whole idea of you know um, non-developer development, and you're taking that into integration, which is a really interesting concept, enabled by cloud, where you can now think of snapping things together versus yeah. coding, coding, coding. Yeah. Cloud and AI, right? So we feel that this problem has grown because of the change in the platform. The compute platform's gone to the cloud, data's going to the cloud. There was a bunch of uh, news the other day about more and more companies moving the analytics into the cloud. And as that's happening, we feel that this approach, and we, the question we ask ourselves when we started this company, we got into uh, building the born in the cloud platform was, what would Apple do if they were to build an integration product? And the answer was, they would make it like the iPhone, which is easy to use, but very powerful at the same time. And if you can do that, you can bring in a massive population of users who wouldn't have been able to do things like video chat. Right. Like my mom was not able to do video chat, and believe me, we tried this in every other thing possible till FaceTime came along. And now she can talk to my daughter, and she can do it without help, any assistance from teenage grandchildren on that side. Right. right so right. what we've done with SnapLogic is by bringing in a beautiful, powerful, sleek interface with a lot of capability in how it connects, snaps together apps and data, we've brought in a whole genre of people who need data in the enterprise so they can serve themselves data. Right, right. So if your title has analyst in it, you don't have to be a programmer analyst. You could be any analyst. Right. You could be a compensation analyst, a commissions analyst, a finance analyst, an HR analyst. All those people can self-serve information, knock down silos, and integrate things themselves. It's so interesting because you know we talk a lot about in innovation and digital transformation and in doing thousands of these interviews. I think the, the answer to innovation is actually pretty simple. You give more people access to the data, you give them more access to the tools to work with the data, and then you give them the power to actually do something once they figure something out. And you guys are really right in the middle of that. So before it's kind of democratization of yeah. the data, democratization of the tools to work with the data, but in the API economy, you got to be able to stitch this stuff together because it's not just one application, Correct. it's not just one data source. You're Correct. bringing from lots and lots of different things. Yeah. And yeah. that's really what you guys are taking advantage of, this cloud infrastructure, which has everything <laughs> available, <laughs> so it's there to connect versus silo and company one and silo and company right. two. Right. So are you seeing it though, in terms of, of people enabling you know, kind of citizen integrators, if you will, versus yeah. citizen uh, Heck yeah. developers, yeah? Heck yeah, so I'll give you an example. Uh, one of our large customers, uh, 
uh, Adobe Systems, uh, right here in San Jose, has been an amazingly successful flagship account for us. About 800 people at Adobe come to www.snaplogic.com every week to self-serve data. We replaced legacy products like Tipco, Informatica, Web Methods about four years ago. They first became a customer in 2014. And those usage of those products was limited to Java programmers and SQL programmers, and that was less than 50 people. Right. And imagine that you have about 800 people doing self-service, getting information to their jobs. Now, Adobe is unique in that it um, uh, is moved to the cloud in a fantastic way, or it was unique in 2014. Right, now right. everybody's emulating right. them and the great success that they've had with the cloud economic model, with the cloud IT model. And so this is working in spades. I mean, we have customers who've come on board in Q4, we're just rounded out Q1, and in less than 60, 90 days, every time I look, 50, 100, 200 people from each large company, whether it's a cosmetics company, a pharmaceuticals company, a retailer, uh, a uh, food merchandise, are coming in and using data. Right. And it's proliferating because the more successful they are, the better they are able to do in their jobs, tell their friends about it, sort of thing, or next next cubicle over, somebody wants to use that too. Right, it's so interesting. Don't be such a great example, because um, they, they did transform their business. Used to they be did. a really expensive yeah. license, you would try to find your one friend that worked there around Christmas, because they think they got <laughs> two licenses <laughs> a year they could buy for a grand, like, well, you got the extra one I could get from you. But they moved to a subscription model, yes. they made a big bet. Yes. And they bet on the cloud, so now if you're a subscriber, which I am, I can work on my home machine, Correct. my work machine, go to machine machine, so it's yeah. a really great transformation story. The other piece of it, though, is, is just this cloud application space. I mean, there's so many cloud applications that we all work with every day, whether it's Basecamp, Salesforce, Hootsuite. I mean, there's there's mm -hmm. there's a proliferation of these yeah. things, and so they're there, they've got data, so the, the integration opportunity is, is unlike anything that was ever there before, because there isn't just one cloud, right. there isn't right. just one cloud app, there's a lot of them. Yes. How do I bring those together to be more yeah. productive? So, so here's the stat. The average enterprise has most cloud services or SaaS applications in marketing, on the average they have 91 marketing applications or SaaS applications. 91, 91. that's the average. The 96% of them are not connected together. Right. Okay. So it, that's just one example. Now you go to HR, stock administration, you go into uh, sales, CRM, and all the ancillary systems around CRM. And there's this sort of massive, to us, opportunity of knocking down these silos and making things work together. And you know, you mentioned the API economy, and whilst that's true that all these SaaS applications have APIs, the problem is most companies don't have programmers to hook up those right, APIs. Right, to connect them. You know, yes, in Silicon Valley we do, and maybe in Manhattan they do, but in everywhere else in the world, the self-service model, the model of being able to do it through something that is simple yet powerful. Right, right. Enterprise grade and simple, beautiful, is absolutely the winning formula in our perspective. Yeah. So the answer is to let these 100 applications bloom, but to keep them well behaved and orchestrated in kind of a federated model, where security, having one view of the world, et cetera, is managed by SnapLogic, and then various people and departments can bring in a blessed SaaS applications, and then snap them in, and the input and the way they connect is done through snaps. Right. And we found that to be a real winning model for our customers. So they don't have to have like 18 screens open, all with different browsers no. and different apps. Swivel <laughs> chair integration <laughs> is gone. Swivel chair integration. Swivel chair integration is gone. <laughs> <laughs> step above and, uh, sneaker net, but still not. Step uh, above, but still not. And, and again, it may make sense in very, very specific, you know, super high speed like Wall Street, high frequency trading and hedge funds, but it is a, it's a minuscule minority of the overall problem set that needs to be solved. Right. Yeah. So it's just a huge opportunity because you just are cleaning it up behind the momentum in the SaaS right. applications, the and momentum data. of the cloud, cloud data. and the data. Cloud apps, cloud data. Right. And in general, if a customer is not going to the cloud, they're probably not the best for us. Right. Right. We, our customers are almost always going towards the cloud, have lots of data and applications on premise, and in that hybrid spot, we have the capability to straddle that kind of architecture in a way that nobody else right, does because right. we have a born in the cloud platform that was designed to work in the real world, which is hybrid. Right, so another interesting thing, right, a lot of talk about big data over the years, it's kind of, now it's, it's just kind of there. Um, but AI and machine learning, artificial intelligence, which should be augmented intelligence and machine learning. And, and really there's kind of the generics, you know, find an old dead guy and, and, and give it a name. Um, <laughs> but where the, we're really seeing the values is starting to bubble yeah. up in applications. It's not Correct. AI generically, it's yes. how are you enabling 
um, a more efficient application, a more efficient workflow, more efficient get your work job done using AI. And you guys are starting to incorporate that in your yes. integration frameworks. Yes. So we took the approach, Dr. Heal Thyself. If we're going to help our customers do a better job of having AI be a game changer for them, how do we apply that to ourselves? We heard one of our CIOs, CIO of AstraZeneca, Dave Smoley, was handing out Astra, the Amazon Alexa Echo Boxes one Christmas uh, about three years ago. And I'm like, my gosh, that's right. That was what Walt Mossberg said in his farewell column. IT is going to be everywhere and invisible at the same time. Right, right. right. It'll be in the wall, so to speak. So we applied AI starting about two years ago, actually now three, because we shipped Iris a year ago. Right. Uh, 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 the artificial intelligence capability inside SnapLogic has been shipping for over 12 months. Fantastic usage. But we applied to ourselves the challenge about three years ago to use AI based on our born in the cloud platform, on the metadata that we have about what people are doing, and in a sense, apply Google Autocomplete into enterprise connectivity problems. Right. And it's been amazing. The AI, as you start to snap things together, as you put one or two snaps and you start to look for the third, it starts to get 98.7% accurate in predicting how to connect SaaS applications together. Right, right. That's like not just, it's not quite autonomous integration yet, but you can see where we're going with this right. thing, right? So it's starting to do so much value add that most of our customers leave it on. Even the seasoned professionals who are proficient and running a center of excellence using SnapLogic, even those people choose to have sort of this AI on all the time helping them. Right. And that engagement comes from the value that they're getting. As they do these things, they make less mistakes, all the choices are readily at hand, and that's happening. So that's one piece of it. Right. So, sorry, let me, let me okay. uh, uh, illustrate one other thing. You know, Napoleon famously said, an army marches on his stomach. AI marches on data. So what we found is the more data we've had and the more customers that we've had, we move about a trillion documents for our customers worldwide in the past 30 days. That is up from 10 million documents in 30 days two years ago. Right, right. That's more customers and more usage. So in other words, they're succeeding. Um, what we found as we've enriched our AI with data has gotten better and better. And now we're getting involved with customers' projects where they need to support data scientists, data engineering work for machine learning, and that self-service iterative model is letting someone who is trying to solve a problem of you know what is when is my Uber going to show up, so to speak, in industry X. Right, right. These kinds of hard AI problems that are predictive, that are that are forward chaining in a sense. Those kind of problems are being solved by richer data, and many of them, the projects that we're now involved in, are moving data into the cloud for data lake to then support AI machine learning efforts for our customers. Right. So you jumped, you jumped a little bit. I want to okay. follow up on your first point, which, Sorry. which is okay. <laughs> which, which is that you're in the very fortunate position because you have all that data flow. You have the, the trillion yes. documents that are yes. changing yeah. hands every month. Born in the cloud platform. So you right? got it, right? You got it. You it's got a, the data. It's a virtuous cycle. Right. It's a virtuous cycle. Some people call it data capitalism. I quibble with that. You know, we're not sort of mining and selling people's personal data to anybody. Right. Right. But this is where our enterprise customers are so pleased to work with us because if we can increase productivity, if we can take the time to solution, the time to integration forward by 10 times, if we can improve the speed, they buy a SaaS application and it gets into production 10 times faster, that is such a good trade for them and for everyone right, else. Right, yeah. right. And, and it feeds like, on itself, right. it's a virtuous you know, cycle. In the Marketo yeah. to yeah. Salesforce uh, integration, it's not that unique from company A to company I B. I bet you somebody in this building <laughs> is doing it on a different floor <laughs> right now. <laughs> exactly, All right, so I think that's such an, an interesting thing. And the yeah. other piece that I like is how, again, I like your kind of Apple analogy, is, is the snap packs, right? So. Yeah. Because we live in a world with, even though there's 91 on average, there's, there's a number of really dominant SaaS mm -hmm. applications mm -hmm. that most people use. You can really build a group of, of, of uh, snaps. I'm going to snap the right, is that a is That's that a the noun? right word, yeah. Of snaps yeah. in a snap pack around the specific applications, then p have your AI powered yeah. by these, these trillion dollars, or trillion transactions that you have going through the machines. Really puts you in a unique position, I think. It does, you know, and we're very fortunate to have the kind of customer support we've had and the sort of uh, customer advisory board, big usages of our products, in which we've added so much value to our customers that they've, they've started collaborating with us in a sense and uh, are passing to us wonderful ideas about how to apply this, including AI. Right. And, and we're not done yet. You know, we have a vision right. in the future towards an autonomous integration. You should be able to say to SnapLogic Iris, connect my company 
and it should. Right. Right. It knows what the SaaS apps are by looking at your firewall, and if your if your people are doing things, uh, building pipelines, right. connecting your on-premise legacy applications, kind of knows what they are. So that day when you should be able to, uh, in a sense, have a bot of some type powered by all this technology on in a in a uh, thoughtful manner is not that far. It's closer at hand than people might realize. Which is crazy science fiction compared to, I mean, <laughs> integration was always well, the nightmare right it, back in the day. It like, is. Yeah, integration, integration. Yeah. But, ah, but on the other hand, it is started to have contours that are well defined. To your point, there are certain snaps that are used more. There are certain problems that are solved quite often. The quote to cash problem is as old as enterprise software. Right. You do a quote in a CRM system, your cash is in a financial system, how does that all work together? Right. So these sort of problems, in a sense, are what McKinsey and others are starting to call robotic process automations. Right. You know, in the industrial age, people stopped, with the industrial age, any handcrafted widget, nuts and bolts and fasteners, started being made on machines. You could stamp them out, you could have power-driven turbines, and et cetera, et cetera, to make things in an industrial manner. And our feeling is, some of the knowledge tasks that feel like widget manufacture, like you're doing them over and over again, right. or robotics, so right. to speak, should be automated. And integration, I think, is ripe as one of those things. And using the value of integration our customers can automate a bunch of other repeatable tasks, like quote to cash. Right, right. It's interesting, just when you say autonomous, I can't help but think of autonomous vehicles, right, which are all the rage and also in the news, and people will say, well, I like to drive. Well, of course, we all like to drive on Sunday sure. down to the beach, and you know, yeah. but, but we don't like to sit in traffic on the way to work. Yeah. That's not driving, that's sitting Correct. in traffic on the way Correct. to work. So, you know, getting down the 101 to your exit and yeah. off again is really yeah. not, that, not that complicated not that in complicated. terms of what you're trying to accomplish Indeed. to Indeed. set itself up. And there are times you don't want to. I mean, one of the most pleasant headlines, most of the news is just full of bad stuff. Right. So right. and so and such and such. But one of the very pleasing headlines I saw the other day in the newspaper was, you know what's down a lot? Not, not Bay Area housing prices, <laughs> but you know what's down a lot? DUI arrests have plummeted because of the benefits of Lyft and Uber. More and more people are saying, you know, I don't have to call a black cab. I don't need to spend a couple hundred bucks to get home. I'm just going to get Lyft or an Uber. Right, so, right. so the benefits of some of these are starting to appear as in plummeting DUIs, right, right. plummeting fa fatalities from people driving while inebriated, plunging into another car, sidewalk, or Right, whatever. right. So, yes. <laughs> Amara's Law, he never Indeed. gets enough credit. I did say it in every interview, right? We overestimate in the short term and we underestimate True. in the long term the effects That's right. of these technologies because we get involved. Yeah. You know, Gartner stole it, it's the hype cycle, yeah. but yeah. really I think Amara yeah. nailed it. And then yeah. over time, really significant changes start to take place. Indeed, and we're seeing them now. All right, well, Grav, great to uh, to get an update from you and a uh, beautiful facility here. Thanks Thank for having you. us up. Thank you, thank you. A pleasure to be here. All right. <laughs> great to see you as well. He's Grav, I'm Jeff, you're watching the Cube from SnapLogic's headquarters. Thanks for watching.